r slash no sleep posted by you slash sleepy hollow underscore 101 something's walking in the rain her teeth flashed white through the downpour for just a moment before disappearing into his neck with a twist of her head she ripped out a substantial portion of his throat bearing his gore to the elements sucking down his blood and viscera with relish the blood dripped down her chin and onto her body only to be washed away by the rain as though it had never happened I cowered under the awning of the public restroom, helplessly watching the desecration of my only friend in this place, Anthony. They told me not to go walking in the rain. I should have listened. I moved to this little coastal town a few months ago, just at the end of winter. I got a job offer in the area and there was nothing tying me back to my old city, so I didn't hesitate. It's a beautiful place, verdant and lush, full of friendly people and cozy townhouses. The moment I stepped foot in town, I knew I'd come home. There's nowhere else on earth I'd rather be. I settled in quickly and began to get the hang of life in a new place. I learned my way around the town, learned the ins and outs of my job, learned the best place to get a beer on a Sunday afternoon. It was on one of those Sundays that I met Anthony. He was sitting at the bar and seemed to be alone, so I struck up a conversation with him. Before long, we were laughing like old friends, and after that we met regularly to grab a beer and play pool. I felt closer to him than even my college friends. Life was very good, almost perfect. Except for the rain. It rains a lot down in these parts, especially during the spring. I'd say that at least four days of the week it would rain hard, the kind of rain that can't be fended off with an umbrella. I've never been much for rain, I don't understand why other people romanticize it so much, but I didn't let it bother me. I thought the benefits of this little town far outweighed this one minor inconvenience. I quickly realized, however, that the rain wasn't considered a mild inconvenience by the townsfolk. On the contrary, a little rain made their world stop turning. The first time it rained, I got a mass text from my boss, simply saying, don't bother coming in today. Work from home. Hopefully see you tomorrow. Confused, I messaged my boss back to ask him what happened. He immediately called me to explain things. I forgot you're new here, he said in his gravelly voice. Listen, there's something you should know about this town. We don't go out when it rains. What do you mean? I asked, baffled. I could almost hear the shrug in his voice. We just don't. Don't ask any more questions about it. Just stay home today. Rather than clearing things up, his explanation left me more confused than ever. I sat at home that day, drinking my tea and watching the storm pass through as I mulled over what he told me. Maybe it was just some weird company policy? But as time went on. It was easy to see that our company wasn't the only entity that observed the rule. Whenever it rained, every shop in town would close down. The post office would lock its doors. The streets would empty. And everything would be silent except for the pattering of the rain against my window. Weird, huh? I didn't ask anybody about it, not even Anthony. I was worried about breaking some unspoken taboo if I questioned this strange practice. And I was eager to keep Anthony as a friend. I'm not adept at making friends, and I was extremely glad to have him around. I shrugged it off as just one of those things, people and places all have their quirks. This one seemed pretty innocuous. I stopped noticing it, after a while, as it became my new normal. Soon, I'd forgotten all about it on a conscious level. Until the night Anthony and I got caught in the storm. We'd stayed out late at the bar across town, drinking the place dry. Although we can both hold our own. We were more than a little tipsy when we headed out for the night. The street was strangely quiet that night, and the bar lacked its usual plethora of patrons. Neither of us noticed as we began walking down the street, him to his apartment and me to my townhouse. We were just passing by the park when I heard the distant rolling of thunder. I stopped and stared up at the sky, noticing for the first time the heavy clouds that had swept in while we were busy drinking. Huh. That's funny, I said. The forecast didn't say anything about rain today. We better hurry. I turned to look at Anthony, only to see his face had gone a ghastly shade of white. We need to get inside, he said, his voice a rough whisper. Ah. Right, I answered, looking back up at the clouds. Then I decided to say what was really on my mind. Hell, it's just a little rain, Anthony. It'll be fine. We'll be home in ten minutes, we can make it. You don't understand, Tom, said Anthony, panic creeping into his voice. He grabbed my arm and dragged me into the park, towards the public restroom. He flew to the door, trying to yank it open, only to find that it was locked. Oh God. Oh no. What's happening? I asked, uneasy. What are you all so afraid of? Just then, 
the rain began to pour down. It happened all of a sudden, one moment, the air was heavy and wet, and the next everything around us was a sheet of water, as though we were trapped behind a waterfall. Anthony was looking towards the coast, and he was beginning to shag. The road we were walking went right by the coast with its rocky beach. The water was on the left, the park was on the right. I always sort of enjoyed that walk, but, judging by the look on Anthony's face, it was not a good place to be at that particular moment. Tom. We aren't afraid of the rain around these parts, whispered Anthony as he clutched at my jacket. His hands felt like ice even through the thick fabric. We're afraid of what the rain brings. I followed his line of sight to the beach, squinting my eyes to make out what was happening. It was difficult to see through the driving rain, but I realized there was something emerging from the water. Not just one something, I thought, but several. Five or six distinct figures walked out of the ocean. They looked like they were walking on their hind legs. In fact, they appeared to be vaguely human in shape. I walked to the edge of the awning, trying to see what they were. The shapes were all taking off in different directions, but most of them didn't appear to have noticed our presence. Except for one, who had paused on the road, and then started to walk slowly towards the park. Get back! hissed Anthony, yanking on my arm and pulling me back to the wall. What are those? I asked, more fascinated than horrified. I have to admit, I was extremely curious. Because they had come out of the ocean like they were. Mermaids, whispered Anthony with a shudder. He had flattened himself against the wall as much as he was able. They usually stay in the water. But something happens to them when it rains, and then. Then they come up on land. That's. Ridiculous, I muttered, watching as the figure moved towards us almost listlessly. That can't be possible. But the closer it got, the more possible it seemed. The figure slowly sharpened in my vision, and I saw a shapely woman with wide hips and full breasts. She appeared to have long hair and limbs. I couldn't see much else through the rain, but I imagined she was quite beautiful. Jesus help us! Jesus save us! muttered Anthony, who had once told me he'd left the Catholic Church years ago. The figure stopped a short ways away from the restrooms where we were cowering. Her voice came to us, faint and tremulous. Please. I need. Help. I'm hurt. Please help me. I was entranced. She had the most beautiful voice I'd ever heard, and immediately I felt an urge to take her in my arms and soothe her. I could just barely see that she was shivering out there in the cold. Are you okay? I asked, trying to sound as comforting as possible. And strong, I wanted to sound strong as well. I wanted her to know I was there for her, to take care of her. My foot. She said, her voice thick with tears. It hurts us so badly. I think I stepped on a broken bottle while I was swimming. It's bleeding so much. I stepped forward without thinking about it. Anthony grabbed my arm again, trying to yank me back, but I would not be moved. What are you doing? Don't listen to it, you idiot. She needs our help. She's alone out here and she's hurt, I argued, pulling back from him. It was hard resisting the urge to simply sweep her off her feet and whisk her away, but I didn't want to leave Anthony behind alone, either. Gritting his teeth, Anthony darted away from the wall to grab me by my shoulders. The woman in the rain inched closer towards me, as though to seek comfort in the shelter of my arms. Come on, man, we have to move back, we have to get back. Quick as lightning, her hand lashed out and she grabbed my friend by the neck in a firm grip. My jaw dropped as I saw green scales scattered down her arm, thinning out into skin near her hand but growing thicker the further up her arm I looked. Anthony gave me a stricken look, tears streaming down his face. Please don't let her take me. He choked out. Before I could react, he was dragged out into the rain, his scream breaking the night air into pieces. I screamed along with him, stumbling back into the wall as I watched her tear him to pieces. First it was his throat, so she could drink his blood as it gurgled with his screams. Then pieces of his face, his cheeks, his nose, his eyes, and his earlobes. Once she'd finished there, she let her hand trail down his torso. With a sharp thrust, she shoved her hand up through his ribcage and into his chest cavity. I could hear the sickening ripping of flesh as she dragged his struggling heart from his chest. It pumped weakly as she bit into it, moaning in ecstasy as she savored my friend's blood. Her body was slick with it, but as the blood was washed away, I could make out the rest of her features. She had a pointed face with entirely black eyes and two rows of sharp, jagged teeth. The scales continued down her body and covered her legs entirely, each thigh was flanked with a ratty green fin and her feet were webbed. Her hands were little more than jagged claws. Although I'd first thought she was a woman, her ravenous meal convinced me that she was little more than an animal, 
a dangerous predator that I was unfamiliar with. Eventually, she finished mauling my friend's corpse, for I noticed it stopped breathing long ago, and paused to look up at me and smile, showing off her bloodstained teeth. I knew he'd taste better than you. Then, as quickly as she had arrived, she was gone into the night, hips swaying like a succubus as she searched for her next victim. I collapsed on the ground under the awning, sobbing and screaming as I looked at my friend's body, or what little remained of it, anyway. That's how they found me the next morning, long after the rain had cleared. I was taken to the hospital and Anthony, well, he obviously ended up in the morgue. I begged to see him and not to see him, over and over, many hours passed before I was in my right mind. There was no investigation, and the funeral was closed casket. I thought everybody would blame me for what happened. After all, they had tried to warn me. But I got more sympathy than contempt. My boss clapped me on the shoulder on my first day back from work and said, every year, there's at least one. Don't blame yourself, kid. Sometimes these things just happen. I wish I could believe that. I haven't moved yet. I keep thinking about it, looking at other cities and other jobs. But I find myself feeling tied to this place. Maybe it's because my actions led to Anthony's death and its guilt keeping me here. Or maybe it's something else. I don't care to examine it too closely. Oftentimes, I catch myself wondering, is this the only place where it happens? Are we the only ones plagued by these horrible creatures? Or are there others out there, terrorized by myths that have somehow transferred into reality? Who else out there has fallen prey to these creatures? Try as I might, I can't convince myself that nobody else has suffered the same fate. So, whoever is reading this, please, I beg you. The next time it rains, check twice before going outside.